Today I will be talking about George Fox, the founder of the Religious Society of Friends. George Fox was born in 1624 in Drayton in the Clay in England. He began training as a cobbler as well as a wool and cattle dealer, but felt a pull towards religion and the church. He grew up in a Puritan home instead of a typically Anglican one and was considered to be a serious child. He says in his autobiography that a common saying about him was, if George says verily, there is no altering him. At age 11, he had an experience with the presence of God that exposed the pureness of this divine presence to him. He identifies this as one of the first times he understood the importance of the presence of God. At age 18, he left home to seek out the counsel of priests and religious leaders. He found them all lacking, though, and began to question the established religious systems of the day. This, among other experiences, led him to start the Religious Society of Friends, otherwise known as the Quakers. For his radical religious beliefs and vocal opposition to the church and the political systems of the day, Fox was imprisoned eight times between 1649 and 1673. He considers these imprisonments to be a blessing, though, because he was able to minister to those he believed needed the gospel the most, people who had truly committed crimes and people who were victims of the corrupt system and had been wrongly imprisoned. In 1669, Fox married Margaret Fell, a widow and member of the Quaker movement. She and her late husband had been a vital part of the movement for many years by offering their home as a headquarters. Fox died in 1691 after many years of evangelism and resistance of the systems of the day. The Quaker movement is Fox's greatest contribution to Christianity as a whole. Fox is known for starting the Religious Society of Friends or the Quaker movement in 1652. He felt compelled to hike up Pendle Hill, a location believed to be haunted by demons. Here, while overlooking the towns below, Fox had a vision of people in white clothing coming to the Lord. He believed this to signify Christ overcoming sin and bringing people into his kingdom. He also believed that he was specifically being called to be a part of these people coming to Christ. Fox came down from the hill and began preaching the gospel and speaking even more boldly against the organized religious structures of the time. His opposition to these religious structures in particular was hated by the priests and other religious leaders in the surrounding towns. He also preached the need to be compassionate to others, to be actively involved in the ministry of the church, and to listen only to the teachings of Christ in order to live a holy life. The religious leaders tried to silence him, but he continued to preach, gathering a following of people that numbered 50,000 by 1660. By his death in 1691, there were more than 100,000 members of the Quaker movement. Though he is credited with starting the movement, there were others who believed in the components of the Quaker movement before it began. They were called Seekers. Fox's role in starting the movement can be more accurately described as popularizing the movement and constructing the organization of the movement by implementing monthly meetings where things like membership and financial issues were discussed. One of Fox's greatest issues with the church was its system of hierarchy within its clergy an issue that affected how the Quaker movement structured itself. He wrote a scathing article called Cain Against Abel, representing New England's church hierarchy and opposition to her Christian Protestant dissenters. In this article, Fox compares the church of the time to Cain as they persecuted the people whom Fox saw as truly adhering to the point of Christianity and the word of Christ. The dissenters, such as Fox himself and the Quakers, are considered of the same heart as Abel in this article, the brother who followed the instructions of the Lord and pleased him with his sacrifice. Fox says of the church in this quote, So sin is in all your houses and within your doors that plead for it as long as you live, and so sin's work you do, not Christ. And over it you do not rule, but persecute them then that have rule over it, that are of the faith of Abel, who has opened the door of their hearts, to let Christ in to rule their hearts, by whom they rule over sin. And by the faith which Christ is the author of, and hath wrought in their hearts, they obtain victory over sin, and their countenance does not fall. Neither be they in the wrath against the righteous. But in all your doors, into whom sin is gotten within your hearts, minds, and spirits, he makes you to rage against them that have rule over him, that he cannot get within the doors and houses of their minds, hearts, and spirits, and such he rages against.
Some he persecutes with the tongue, some in body and estate, and some to life itself. But the righteous blood from Abel will come upon the evil, persecuting, and murdering generation. That is the word of Christ to you all that will stand. The beliefs of the Quaker movement rest on three foundational beliefs. First, they focus on the guidance of the Holy Spirit instead of the guidance of those in leadership in the church. They call this the inward light, which refers to the God in everyone, something they said we should recognize and cultivate rather than trusting only in the teachings and rulings of the organized church. Second, they rejected the traditional organization of Christianity, particularly ordained ministry and rites or creeds. They believe that everyone is ordained via their relationship with God to preach the gospel. This also goes back to the belief that Christ alone is to be trusted in and believed in, not the words of any specific human. Fox believed that established ministers and sacraments or rites, such as tithes or oaths, took away from the ability of the Spirit to freely work. There are some ministers within the Quaker movement who have been formally recognized and sanctioned. They are called recorded ministers or public friends. These ministers travel freely among the different groups of Quakers, sharing their testimonies. Third, the Quakers advocate almost exclusively for peace, opposing war and violence because of the suffering it brings. They later actively opposed slavery, being one of the first predominantly white religious groups to do so publicly. Fox's writings and influence through the Quaker movement touches our theology today, forcing us to examine how we approach organization within the church, our views on justice and peace, and how much of an emphasis we put on the workings of the Holy Spirit within our churches and our daily lives. The Religious Society of Friends is still alive today, though smaller than more recognized religious groups, with only an estimated 210,000 members worldwide, with most of them in Britain. I will end this quote from Fox, one that sums up his beliefs about the church and our relationship with God. The Lord showed me, so that I did see clearly, that he did not dwell in these temples which men had commanded and set up, but in people's hearts. His people were his temple, and he dwelt in them.